So you've downloaded Gameflow and now you want to understand how to actually use it without losing your sanity, which is why I created this series of shortish videos. So to use Gameflow, the first thing you have to do is set up what I call the working set. The working set, which can be defined here, is a collection in your scene that contains all the objects that you're going to be working on and that you want Gameflow to process. Anything outside of the working set will be completely ignored. But once you've got it set up, you can ask Gameflow to generate the baking sets. So one of them is going to be the low poly set, which is what you're going to be using in Substance Painter as your uh, as your base mesh for the, the project. And it's, as you'd expect, a lot less detailed. But don't get too excited, it didn't do it all by itself, there is no magic involved. And then you've got the high poly set, which in this case looks exactly like the uh, original working set, except that the naming is a little different. We can switch between all the different sets at the top. We can also generate the export mesh, which is what you're going to be using. This, this is basically the final mesh that you're going to export to your uh, game engine. And once you're done with everything, you can just clear the generated sets so that you don't uh, waste any sort of disk space on them because they're completely redundant and can be recreated almost instantly with a click. You're not supposed to modify them manually, so if you, for example, find a little issue with your high poly, you should not be trying to fix it here and, you know, delete faces and add things. Like, this is not a good idea because it's completely destructive. So next time you want to regenerate the high poly set, it will delete all your changes. So if you want to fix things, always do it on the working set. The working set is the only one you will be working on. One thing to note is that the name of the auto-generated sets, as well as the name of the exported files, is derived from the scene name at the top. So if I rename it to scene or whatever, if I make low, I've got now scene.001 underscore low, which is not great. So I'll put it back to basics and regenerate, and now the name is back to normal. Now, if we switch to edit mode, we'll see that our uh, menus are quite different. So we've got stuff relating to UVs and detail levels. So this is all data that we want to store in the geometry. So now in edit mode, we can see, for example, that I've got all those yellow uh, wireframes. And those are edges that I manually tagged to say, this is just high detail. I do not want it in my low poly. So we clearly don't need all, all that detail, we want it baked. So we say, we select, we select the edges we, we don't care about, we press Shift V and we can click on Mark High Detail. Uh, or we can use the menu here, but I prefer the pie menu. In the pie menu, you've got multiple versions of it. So in edge mode, you've got at the top, you've got stuff relating to seams and at the bottom to detail. But if we go into uh, face mode, we've got same thing at the top, we've got uh, UV actions and at the bottom we've got detail actions and if we go back to object mode we still have another set of uh, options in the pie menu relating to setting the smoothing and adding a quick bevel to the geometry. And finally we have the object settings panel where you can modify per object settings for example the auto unwrap behavior or whether or not you want objects to be merged together at the end. And that's it for the quick overview of the plugin. You can check the rest of the videos in the playlist to see how to make use of the individual features of Gameflow.